All right, you are still watching Ways. Now, on the 24th of October each year is the International United Nations Day. Um, this followed a declaration by the United Nations General Assembly in 1947, which designated 24th of October the anniversary of Charter of the United Nations as United Nations Day by proclaiming that the day would be instrumental in making people aware and it shall be devoted in making known to the people of the world the aims and the achievements of the United Nations and to gain their support for its work. Now, by further resolution, that of the United Nations Resolution 2782, adopted in 1971 by the United Nations General Assembly, it was declared that the United Nations Day would henceforth be celebrated as an international holiday. And it was recommended that it will be maintained as a public holiday by all United Nations member state. The event is instituted by primarily to dis disseminate to people worldwide the aims and the uh, accomplishment of the United Nations organization. I mean, anybody that knows what is happening in the world, there's absolutely no part of the world, rural mm -hmm. communities everywhere, that you would not find the mark of the work yeah. that the UN is doing. Yeah, so. Sure. I mean, it's no, it's no, it's a no-brainer that they should have a holiday um, to celebrate exactly. the great work they're doing, yeah. continue to project, and it's important again. I mean, for awareness, so that people can then contribute, mm -hmm. right? Because again, it takes money to do some to of do, these things, of right? So if they dedicate a special day to say, okay, you know what, this is what we're doing, come see what we're doing. Of course, more people would come into the space and say, you know what, I think I like Let's what you're doing, and I want to in. also be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is that. So. I think I'm talking too fast, <laughs> am I? All right, so um, what did you find first in the news? Okay, in the news today, hmm, it's about this Okada ban. And now I read that um, there's a union, right, for the Motorcycle Riders Association. And they have decided that in the FCT, but they are starting in the FCT, they're going to issue digital identification mm -hmm. to the Okada riders so as to help to curb criminality amongst them. And I thought to myself, okay, is this really going to, would it work? How many of these guys do you want to start giving? How do you even intend to, you know, ensure that every Okada rider has a digital means of identification? I'm, I'm not sure how they intend to go about this, although I'm very curious. I want to see why or how they intend to, um, you know, pull this through or make sure this happens. Maybe they can start off in the FCT, but then in Lagos, I don't think the guys that live in all of, all of these slums would come out and decide to, you know, get registered to the point of getting a digital means of identification. And then you're saying, so what happens to the towels? Are the towels, when the towels stop them, what are the towels asking for? What? You know, there's a whole lot of that is intertwined in this. But then let's see what they come up with and how they intend to pull off this new regulation. Mm, we don't have a choice, really. Mm. Honestly, we don't have a choice. And so when I hear digital identification, whatever happened to us making sure that we had NIN before our phone number? So, I mean, we already have an identification. If you have a, an active phone line that mm -hmm. is working it means that you're already in the right. system right of course. i mean most people that could not use their phones they had to go and get the nin for them to be able to activate their phone so i mean if nigeria is really serious about collecting data, data. and trying to now document every citizen it's easy but you see these are the problems and this is what i really want to discuss when we're talking about the northern um Imp impact right because again some of these numbers are exaggerated because if you really are sure that we have these numbers why are you not you know properly um, what's it called doing your census let's mm -hmm. have the actual numbers actual, of, of yeah. the day of the people that we say we have right but they will not do all of these things because again you know these are tools in the hands of politicians to just continue to inflate things but I want to quickly take Manny's story because I found it really interesting and I don't want us to lose that story. So the Rivers um, State Tax Force on Flood Management said it has an intensified efforts to evacuate persons trapped in some rural communities as the ravaging floods enters its fourth week. Now the Tax uh, Force Chairman, Dr. George Umwaike, said that um, this in the Aho Ada right, Ahoada is local government area of the state while distributing more supplies of foodstuff and other relief materials. Now, this, um, he reiterated that the government committed, is committed rather to um, taking away the hardship brought by the natural disaster, stressing that 
task force was already working on the post-flood program. Uh, according to him, let me quote him, he says, I want to assure the public that we will continue to do this and will assure you that those trapped in various communities will be rescued and moved to higher ground. Um, I really would love to talk about this more, but I mean, I've penned down the topic for tomorrow because I feel like it is important. When I saw that video, I said, how reckless can somebody be? I mean, these are the things that, so there's a part of government, there's a part of citizen. So we need to start to also talk to ourselves, exactly. especially when we hear the cases of all this flooding mm -hmm. thing. But I'm happy that they are trying, they are attempting to get the people out, but we are hoping that, you know, no more lives are lost. I mean, my father called me yesterday. I mean, out of the blue, because usually he's not always worried about things. Right? He just said, Ua, please, I want to be sure that your area, I hope there's no flood, <laughs> that the stories he's hearing in the news that is, giving, is getting me a bit worried. I said, no, daddy, we're fine, you know. I mean, he called yesterday just to check up on me to say, I hope, hope no flood in our area and all of that. Because it's actually very worrisome, very right, what is going on. And it's, it's seeming like nobody even cares. Everybody's just going about nobody their normal nobody lives. lives like it's nothing. <laughs> we're just going about our normal lives like it's nothing. All right, so my story is actually somewhat tied to what we're talking about. That was why I particularly took this story. Uh, ah, let me see if I can pull out the link because now, what uh, our dear Festus Kiamu said <laughs> about the North supporting Buhari, that he's very, very positive, right? Yeah, that the North um, will work for um, Tinumbu because <laughs> he's a spokesperson what? of the, um, the presidential flag bearer of the APC. That's... Um, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So he says, there's a particular part that I want to just quickly read from this story. Right? Someone said, um, Buhari, he said, or rather, Kemu says, Northern governors are trustworthy. Someone said, he should, he should add the on, the prefix. Yes, on trustworthy. <laughs> yeah, that was like it. He said, so what makes you think, this was a question that was posed to him, what makes you think that um, the North will dump a Northerner like Atiku for Tinubu? He said, for the second time in Nigeria's history, we will see our brothers' fidelity and trustworthiness in, in the North. They have shown it in the case of M.K. Abiola. Mm. Did you remember that Abiola defeated uh, Tofa and Kano, who were the forces that worked against him at that time? This, this same Ashiwaju was a member of the then SDP. Um, they were the same people who worked for the Abiola ticket. Now, the second, now, the second and most important thing I want you to know is that we have two major factors to put on the table. The first one is the commitment of the governors who control the North. He now says we have 14 out of 19 governors, if I'm correct. Now, the only ones we don't have control over are Taraba, Benue, Sokoto, Bauchi, and Adamawa. Now, we have committed, um, we have commitment of our governors who said the ticket should be returned back to the South. Uh, they took this decision at a time when they could have taken the ticket on a platter of gold. Their reaction was swift because they wanted to reunite the country. So the fact, second factor is a big masquerade President Buhari, mm -hmm. who will take Ashwaju's hand to say, this is the anointed one. <laughs> Does Buhari look like a dubious man? That's the question. He says, he's a soldier and a campaign chairman for the office. APC. Those are the factors we are campaigning and banking on. So on that mm -hmm. note, Festus Kiamu, I say good luck to you. We'll go on a break now when we come back from the break. We'll have our conversations around the northern relevance in the Nigerian political terrain. Stay with us. We'll be right back.